thanks for joining us. As you can see, people are filling in already. We've got an extraordinary time planned. We're preaching through the series. It's the story of David. It's the story of a young man who is forgotten, but he's chosen. It's the boy who had become king. It's the shepherd who's a poet. It's exceptional. So thank you for joining us. Uh, click at the bottom, subscribe to our channel, and uh, we're trusting that God will have an influence in your life as he did with David. God bless you. Good morning, Lighthouse Church. Wow, it's so good to see you guys. And yeah, my name is Crispin, and I'm one of the pastors here. And it's really an honor and a privilege to be able to share God's word this morning. Um, we're in the middle of an exceptional series. Uh, if you missed it, you can catch it on YouTube on our Lighthouse uh, Church Secunda um, YouTube channel. But I, I just want to encourage you it's an awesome series. Really, it's about David, the shepherd boy who became king. This, uh, yeah, he was a warrior who became a poet. Yeah, he was, he was a servant leader who led people with integrity of heart and skill of hand. And he's really an awesome person that we can get some life lessons from. And we're going to spend some time this morning uh, just, just focusing on David. So let's bow our heads and let's pray. Yeah, our Father, we thank you for an awesome morning. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here right now. And we thank you for your presence. And Lord, I want to submit myself to you. And I ask humbly that you would use me, Lord. Lord, anything that's, that's not of you, won't you remove it? Lord, I pray the words that are straight from your throne, that they would touch our hearts and impact our lives. Lord, I pray that... No one leaves the same way we got in. But Lord, everybody has an encounter with your love this morning. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for what you've done for us on the cross. Thank you that we get to call you our dad. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So it's all about Jesus, yeah? So it's a David series, but it's all about Jesus, right? It's all about who he is what he's done, and the promises he has made to each one of us. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. So Jesus is God. He's our Savior, He's our Lord, He's our King, and He deserves all glory, all honor, and praise, and worship. And wasn't it awesome this morning just to be in his presence, and be touched by the Holy Spirit. And I believe he's got more in store for us. Amen? Amen. So if we are created in his image, and he's a bit playful, uh, so we get to be playful as well. So we're going to enjoy this time this morning. And I just want to share something briefly. So my precious wife Carmen and I, uh, we, we've got two boys. Their names are David and Daniel. And, uh, man, they grow up so quickly. They're right now at nine and seven, and they're such a blessing. And they were much smaller, but I remember one of their favorite games, well, it was a favorite for me. I think they enjoyed it as well, because they used to laugh and giggle when uh, it's hide-and-seek, but it's the kitty baby version. So I would do something like this. Where's he, where's he, where's he? There's he! <laughs> and, man, they loved it. It cracked them up, and, and I enjoyed it because it was so easy to entertain them, right? I mean, that was good for at least three years. <laughs> and, <laughs> but they enjoy that game. And the Word of God is sometimes similar to that game of hide-and-seek, where if, if we look at the Old Testament, we see Jesus revealed in ways that if you just quickly look through the Bible, you, you will miss it. But if you really focus in and ask Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus, He does that. So, so let's, let's, let's find Jesus in the story of David. So we're picking it up from chapter 17. Uh, we're going to start from, from verse 24. But just a quick recap of where we are. So the Israelite and the Philistine armies are in a battle. Okay, um, they're battling, and, and this is not just a, a Mickey Mouse battle, right? So this is a battle where 
If you lose, your nation will serve the other nation. Yeah? There's a lot at stake. So they're in, in the middle of this, this valley. Well, actually, they're on the two mountains. Uh, who remembers what the mountains are called? Okay, let me help you. Fear Mountain, Faith Mountain, right? <laughs> and the valley is called El. Ah! Right? So it sounds painful, right? So this is where they are, in this valley. And the thing about battles, I'm not sure if, if you've been in any battles recently. Anybody been in battles recently? I can't see too many hands. So if you're in a battle, you want the higher ground advantage, yeah? You don't want to be in the valley where the guys from the higher ground are just going to nail you with their arrows and spears and bullets and AK-47s and R4s and all of that stuff. So you want to be on the mountain. So now this was, this was sort of a stalemate, okay, where nobody wants to move down into the valley and up the other guy's mountain. So they're both on the side. And then we hear that, that the Philistines have this giant beast of a man called Goliath. And what's he doing? He's taunting the Israelite soldiers for 40 days and 40 nights. And what's he saying to them? Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. Who's man enough to face me? I'll make you guys a deal. If, if one of you Israelites come up to me and fight me, if you defeat me, I'm, my nation is going to serve you. But guess what? If me, Goliath, if I defeat you, your nation is going to serve me and, and our nation. So there was a lot at stake. So David gets on the scene, and he's actually, I want you to hear this, right? He's on a mission from his dad. Yeah? I'm setting you up. So he's on a mission from his dad. And what was the mission? It was to bring some, some food to his brothers who were at the battlefield, right? At the, at the forefront of the battle. I reckon it was bunny chows. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be because it says there were 10 loaves, right? So, so we know David was a shepherd boy. So I guess it's going to be beans bunnies because the, the sheep are not going to appreciate mutton bunnies, yeah? So, so David's on the way with his beans bunnies. Maybe it would have given the soldiers some extra firepower. I don't know. But, but in any case, they're on the way and... And if you don't know what a bunny is, oh my goodness, you are missing out on life. Let me tell you this. You haven't lived until you've had a bunny chow, right? So, so basically what it is, um, it's a loaf of bread. You, you cut it up. It's unsliced. So you take that center soft bread out and you put some curry in there and you've got to eat it with your hands. And then it's, wow, it's awesome. Especially when my wife makes it, yeah? <laughs> so, so... This is the scene. And then David arrives, and he hears Goliath. And Goliath is just shouting, right? And declaring these, these words against the Israelite army. So let's pick it up from verse 24. It says, All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. So I really feel the Holy Spirit impressing on me Actually, this is sometimes how we feel, that, that sometimes we don't understand the power that we have access to. Holy Spirit is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. That same power is available to each one of us. But do we live with, with the knowledge of that power? Do we experience that power daily? You know, it's, it's easy to look to ourselves and think, you know, I can do things on my own. You know, I'll leave the big stuff to God. And I'll sort out, you know, everything else. And if I need him, I know where to call him. I just pitch up at Lighthouse Church and bam, the presence of God is here. 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, any service, really. But actually, Holy Spirit wants to have an intimate relationship with each one of us. It's not just a Sunday thing. 
You know, religion wants to say there's a separation between the secular and the spiritual. It says that Sundays, that's meant for God, and, and the rest of the week, that's, you know, party on and live your life and enjoy yourself. But actually, we're called to live a life that's led by the Holy Spirit, that allows Him to move, that, that we are his, his feet, His arms, His legs, His mouth, so that He can reach people for the gospel and for Christ. Yeah. Let's pick it up from verse 25. So it says, And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And the king will enrich, will enrich the man who kills him with great riches. Let's listen carefully, yeah? Great riches, and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. So did you catch that? Great riches, the bride, the father's house. I'm setting you up. <laughs> I'm setting you up. So, again, Jesus is revealed in the Old Testament. Yeah? He's the victorious one who's won the battle. He's got the victor's crown. And guess what? He's captivated the bride. He's shown his love for the bride. And actually, he's preparing a, a room for us in his father's house. That's Jesus. Jesus is so awesome. So this reward, if we bring it back to David and, and, and Jesse, his dad, this would have been an awesome blessing for them, right? So, so there would be no tax imposed on Jesse's household. Can you imagine if Tito Mboweni, our finance minister, doesn't get to touch your money? Man, that's an extra... 30, 40, 50 percent, right, that you get in your bank account. That would be awesome. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so David could also obtain great riches. Man, and even be heir to the king's throne. Now, we, we know from, from a few weeks back that Samuel was on the scene and he actually prayed for David. He anointed him as king. But he wasn't there yet, right? He was, he was still taking care of the sheep. Could this be what Samuel meant? That David would become the king, you know, through this way? Let's pick it up from verse 26. And David said to the man who stood by him, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in the same way. So shall it be done to the man who kills him. So it's interesting that David saw Goliath's identity as being uncircumcised. So what that means is that according to the Abrahamic covenant, he wasn't separated and set aside for God. Right? He was not worthy of God. He was not worthy of his presence. So he's actually lower, lower down than, than the Israelites, right? So David saw that. Everybody else saw this height, this massive man, and saw his identity as being, you know, so huge. And that's, that's the difference between David and the other soldiers. David's focus was on the fact that the Israelite army belonged to the living God. They were the army of the living God. Not, not just Saul's army. They belonged to God. So from verse 28 it says, Now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness, I know your presumption and the evil of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. Eesh. Sounds like Big Brother was upset, no? <laughs> so actually, he, he was maybe a bit jealous, maybe a bit offended. Because we know back again in, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, when Samuel 
was, was praying for all the brothers. Eliab was the eldest. So guess what? He was first in line. And, and Samuel looked at him and said, God has not chosen him. And he went all the way down until he got to the second last brother, and he wasn't good enough. He wasn't chosen by God. And then, then Samuel asked, is there another brother? Because none of these, these boys make the grade, unfortunately. So when tensions are high, not everyone is your cheerleader. But don't become a hater. Yeah? Be, be the person who encourages others, who shares God's love with them, encouraging them to be the the best Holy Spirit-filled, Jesus-loving, Father-honoring, Bible-believing people that they can be. Yeah? That's what we're called to be. Call out the gold in people rather than just condemn them and, and just shout lies at them. We need to lead by example and let others follow. As Christians, as believers, we should be setting the standards so high. That people see the way we live and say, man, these Christians have something so special. They talk with such love. They have such compassion for people. They're generous. They're kind. Man, and, and guess what? We can't do this on our own. We need Holy Spirit. Because the flesh is weak. Flesh doesn't want to be good to people all the time. Flesh gets tired. It's a drag sometimes. That's why we need Holy Spirit to fill us and to lead us and to guide us. A very important thing is that he was jealous and he was offended. This is Eliab, the big brother. And jealousy and offense can actually destroy the intimacy we have with the Father. And this is actually one of the biggest strategies of the enemy. If he pulls us away from our relationship with our king... We're separated. We're alone. We're in the valley. And we're going to be taken out. So my wife and I, um, we were married almost 16 years ago. Yeah? So September is going to be 16 years. Man, she's a blessing. <laughs> How she's, she's put up with me this long, that's, that's God's grace, I promise you. But we had to wait almost four years before our first little one arrived. And so it, it was a bit of a tough time. I mean, we were courting since matric, high school sweethearts. And, and we, we were really together for so long. So we were ready for kids um, after we got married. But we had to wait. And man, if, if I had to be honest, there were some jealous thoughts, some, some offensive thoughts that, that came up in my, in my heart. When, when I see those around me were, were, you know, falling pregnant so quickly and just enjoying the blessing that kids are. So, so yeah, it, it was a bit nasty, but eesh, sorry, I'm human. <laughs> and so I had these feelings. And I remember us going to multiple services, multiple venues, you know. We were just going for the things of God. But getting to these meetings... Inevitably, there, there would be a call for you know, people who, who are trusting for, for breakthrough and, and for kids just to come up, and we'd be there, you know, praying and just trusting God. Nothing happened. And then, at the one meeting, this couple came, came up and, and shared with us, prayed over us, and they just said, you know, maybe you, you should pray for, for those who are also in your similar situation, who are trusting for kids. And man, that was like Holy Spirit just knocked me and said, this is, this is what you've been missing out on. You know, you've been robbing other people and, and it's been, your blessing has been held back. So we did that. We prayed for some friends and man, a few months later, we, we were pregnant and that was awesome. And God is so faithful. So we just give him glory and honor for that. But but I'm not giving you a secret formula, <laughs> okay? But what I'm trying to say is that this is a lesson that we've learned as a couple, right? That, that actually God loves each one of us and that he cares for his children and that he's faithful 
that he's good, and again, that these offenses and, and these, these jealous thoughts, they ruin our relationship with the Father. Yeah. So let's pick it up from verse 29. And David said, what have I done now? So in response to his brother, was it not but a word? And he turned away from him toward another and spoke in the same way, and people answered him again as before. So sometimes, like Jesus said, yeah, we need to turn the other cheek. When people are coming with offense uh, towards us, we need to turn the other cheek. So verse 31 says, When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. So I want to look at this from a slightly different angle, and I want to say that you're never too young or too old to serve God. Yeah? Yeah? If your hands are to the plow, right, hashtag, which means that you are available and your heart is ready to serve, guess what? God wants to use you. So no excuse can disqualify you. Not your age, um, not, not your lack of knowledge of the Bible. None of these things disqualify us. If we're available and we want to serve, God wants to use us. Sometimes we think our past disqualifies us. Man, you don't know how bad I've been. Do you know the things I've done? Actually, God sees you and he loves you just the way you are. And yes, he wants to change you as Holy Spirit works within us. But actually, as you are, he asks you to come. You don't need to change. He will do the changing for us as Holy Spirit works within us. So Psalm 81 verse 10 says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. So that just speaks a bit to me that that Holy Spirit wants to lead us and guide us. You know, if we say we don't know enough about the word, open your mouth and he will fill it. You know, that's, that's what he wants to do. He wants to use us. So I want to invite you to get plugged into your local church. So I trust if, if you're calling Lighthouse Church your home, that you're plugged in, that you've seen the, the calendar, you've seen what's, what's happening, and actually you've put your hands to the plow and say, you know, I want to get involved. And I believe God is touching our hearts that there are things he's, he's given us for His glory. He's placed gifts within each one of us that He wants to bring out. We need to be obedient to Him and give it back to Him. And serve him with what he's blessed us with. So I want to ask you, what passion has God put in your hearts for you to serve him with? We need to faithfully serve in his kingdom so that he gets glory. There are many opportunities in Lighthouse Church to get involved. And we're really spoiled for choice. Yeah, So, so we can be on security detail. We can join the soup kitchen. We can join a life group. We can come to prayer on Wednesdays. Um, there's, there's new life. There's hospital outreach. There's Bible school. There's intercessory teams. And if you're really anointed, there's Kid Zone. <laughs> yeah? So there's a lot of stuff that's available. So you can pick, choose, and refuse what you get involved in. But I want you to be led by the Holy Spirit. Right? Because... Because actually, as we live out our calling and our destiny, we're more fulfilled. You know, uh, it's as we give of what God's blessed us with that we, that we actually receive. And it's better to give than to receive. So verse 34, it says, But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, 
and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. So the lions and bears that David killed were not the Lion King Simba or the Care Bears, right? Oh, look at that, my goodness. I want to get a kitten now. No, not really, not really. Okay, but actually, they looked more like this next image. So I want to ask you, what are the lions and the bears? Okay, and, and I need to give you a warning right now, so, so the next image may be a bit disturbing. Um, I apologize in advance uh, for it. Sorry, I couldn't find a, a better way to do this. Um, yeah, so we can go to the next slide. Oh, no, man. <laughs> No, that's not the one. <laughs> okay, in any case. So the next slide was actually a mathematical slide, right? So it, it shows a picture of, of test plus God equals testimony. Test plus God equals testimony. Do you, do you, do you get it? Test plus Lord equals testimony. I'm sorry to bring maths into this. I, I know... Uh, you, you thought once you were done with school, you're done with maths. You never want to see this stuff again, right? Test plus Lord equals testimony. Stick with me, right? So, so guess what? No test plus Lord equals no testimony. Okay, so, so what am I trying to say? So I'm trying to say that sometimes we need a test to have a testimony, Sometimes we need to go through some, some challenges, some struggles to actually be able to say, you know what, I had a bad time, but God brought me through it. God is faithful, he's loving, he's kind, and we can trust him with our lives. Great. So let me ask you this. Did Jesus promise no tests? Yeah. No? Yes? Yes? No? <laughs> so let's, let's see what he says in John 16, 33. So he says, I have said these things to you that in me, and that's in Jesus, we may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. So tribulation is test, right? But take heart. I have overcome the world. So, so what we do in private is very significant. And specifically, what we find ourselves doing early in the morning. Yeah? So, so those thoughts I was having before we were pregnant about, you know, being jealous and being offended by these people, right? The, these things were, were happening sometimes early in the morning, late at night. But I believe when we seek the Father's presence early in the morning, and we're aware of the Holy Spirit's presence throughout the day, that's when we allow Him to move in our hearts and our lives. When we prioritize our time with Him, that's when He will draw near to us as we draw near to Him. So that's from James chapter 4, verse 8. And guess what? We desperately need Holy Spirit in our lives. We're not to, meant to live this life without Him. We're not meant to do that. But if we have him in our lives, come on. If he can be for us, who can be against us? Yeah? This God, this king, this ruler of all. Man, what an awesome privilege. I need to be clear here. The enemy, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his mandate. Jesus came to give us life in abundance. And that life in abundance is, is maybe a bit vague, and I don't have time to get into that now, but it's, it's more than just having a huge balance in your bank account, having the latest fancy car, or living in the biggest house. It's so much more than, than those things. And as we give of our hearts and our lives, as we sow into other people, as we're generous, that's actually when we'll realize, man, I thought 
this was life in abundance. But it's, it's completely different. And you're never going to know that until you take that step of faith and say, you know what, maybe I'm going to hold back on splurging this month and, I don't know, visit the soup ministry or the, or, or the soup kitchen and do something there with, with some cash. But God, God will honor that. So he is always good. He's always loving. Jesus does not give us sickness and disease. Okay? That's a lie straight from hell. Jesus does not give us sickness and disease. But guess what? He is Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. So we don't suffer alone. He's with us through our tests and our tribulations. Through our challenges with health, like, like my sister shared this morning. What an awesome testimony. Right? And, and guess what? Next week, Saturday, it's another fire and wind. So I want to encourage you. Men, bring the sick. Bring those who, who have tried doctors and, and tried, you know, what the world has to offer. Bring them in and let's see God do amazing things, yeah? So we trust God for healings. And we've seen and heard amazing testimonies. Does it always happen? Does everyone we pray for get healed? Unfortunately, that, that's not the case. And I don't know the answer why. All I do know is that we love people. We love people by, by praying for them and trusting God for their miracle. So that they feel the love, even, even if that miracle doesn't happen. They feel the love of God. That we were willing to step out in faith and trust God for that miracle. Amen? So let's read verse, verse 37, and we're almost done. You guys have been so good. So, and David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. So here's David, busy taking care of the sheep, right? And these animals get, get there, and they're on the scene. They want to take him out. So this humble boy had this heart that said, actually, it wasn't my strength. It wasn't because I'm, I'm out with the sheep, but I'm working out. Man, I'm pumping those rocks. You should see me. <laughs> he, he wasn't doing cardio, you know, around, around the sheep, making sure, you know, they didn't have sheepdogs back in Israel. I mean, have you seen those lions and those bears? Man, they would eat sheep dogs for breakfast. So, so David wasn't a, a health nut, right? Going for it. But actually, what does he say? The Lord. The Lord delivered me. Man, he acknowledges that the Lord delivered him and it was not his own strength. He had a test. And he trusted God. And God came through. Yeah, it's, it's the power of the testimony. And we get to release this in our lives to those around us. Because like my sister shared this morning, that testimony, it belongs to her. Nobody can take it away. She knows the medication bills have come down since, since June. Yeah, she knows that God has touched her. She's felt his presence and her life is different because of that. Man, that's the power of the testimony. That's what we get to share. But we need to take a risk. So she needed to step out and get to fire and wind. She needed to be invited. Someone, someone invited her. Come, won't you come? Are we doing that? Not, not to put a heavy on you, but man, to, to offer an invitation, that's, that's <laughs> what does that cost? Hey? We chat more about sports and the weather. <laughs> Why not invite someone? Take that step. Ooh, it's a chicken line. Nah? <laughs> step over the chicken line and just ask someone. Invite them. Man, let's get into some deep conversations. Yeah? Are, are, you, are, you, are you scared of that? So we just keep it very superficial, very on the top. Yeah, weather, sports, easy. Anybody can talk about sports, Right? But if we want to get to the deeper things, those things that matter more to people, maybe even the most, 
if you think about what's at stake. We're talking about eternity. Eternity. And being separated from God or being with Him. So, so David says, the Lord delivered me. So who is the Lord? So he's Jesus. He's the King of kings. He's the creator of the universe. He's the most high God. He's all powerful. But actually he, he was in heaven. And he said, man, I, I see my brothers and sisters. I see human suffering. They're going to spend eternity away from me if I don't go down and do something. So he did. Actually, he did. He came down. He fors- it says he gave up heaven. He gave it up. He said, I'm going to go down and pay this price. Why? Because he loved us. He loved you. He loved me. That's why he did it. Love drew, drew him to the cross. It pulled him to the cross. It was like there's a magnet on that cross. And it was the love of Jesus. And that's why he came. And he's God with us. He's God with us, Emmanuel. And he's the one my wife and I trusted completely to do things that that we could not do in our lives. And he came through for us. And I want to encourage you that... (laughs) After that, I mean, I've mentioned our two boys, right? So they're growing reminders of the faithfulness of God. They're two walking testimonies that we have. And there's so much more. I'm sure that if we we go across this auditorium, we've got testimonies here that will amaze us, that will astound, astound us in terms of what God has done. We need to remember those things. I'm always telling my wife, write it down, write it down. You're gonna forget. And, and we do, we, we forget, you know, these amazing things that God does. I mean, if you look at the people of Israel, right? So they had seen awesome testimonies, you know, that Moses, empowered by the Holy Spirit, that God used him in amazing ways. I mean, hitting a rock and water comes out of it, hello? I'm a bit thirsty now. <laughs> I'm not going to hit any rocks. Nothing's going to happen, Right? Man, that happened. They saw these miracles, but then they forget the goodness of God. They forget His power. So, my wife and I came to know God and His peace and His comfort and His faithfulness and His provision through our test. And our trust in the Lord continues to grow daily. So, I want to end with this illustration. So, so recently I, I took my family out to, to Gold Reef City, and uh, so the theme park, not the other side of it. And, and this was so that we could, I really wanted to enjoy pushing their boundaries a bit in the theme park, right? So, so uh, creating some safe trials and tribulations for them, right? So my eldest son, he's now tall enough to, to, to ride all the thrill rides. Yeah. <laughs> so as the good dad that I am, I said, Man, we're going to do the anaconda first. Wow. So if you know the anaconda, if you don't, it's, it's a roller coaster. It's, man, it's flying around 90 k's an hour, and it's, it's really awesome. So, man, he, the first time we did it, his eyes were closed. They were, they were closed so tight. <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, he insisted that we go back to that one. Dad, can we please go back to that anaconda just one more time? Just one more time, just before we leave. And man, that, that made me so proud because he was able to overcome his fears. Okay, it's a, a trivial ride, right? But he was able to enjoy the ride and trust his dad, yeah? And he was fine. Man, I believe we're called to do that. That that's the Father's heart for us. That we need to know that He's got us safe. That Holy Spirit is with us and that we have nothing to fear. And let's make Him proud. I just want to share this clip with us quickly. Do we have it?
Okay, that does not do it justice, I promise you. You need to be there to experience. That's a bit lame. My goodness. You need at least to feel that, you know, your hair or your lack of hair. Uh, <laughs> you need to feel that wind. You need to experience it. And man, we need to experience God's love more. We need to be those who, who are giving the people out at our workplace, at our, at our schools. Our work colleagues need to experience the love of God through us. So, so I want every eye um, just to bow down. Um, let's, let's close our eyes. Um, my intention this morning was to remind us all about the power of testimony. And to encourage you to trust Jesus through your own tests so that you also can have a testimony. Like David with the lions and the bears, so that you could share it with others and give Jesus glory and encourage them. So I want us to pray now. Yeah, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. So I'm not sure where you stand with Jesus currently, my brother, my sister. But this is what I'm sure about. Jesus is the one who wants you to know him. He wants to be intimate with you. That's what he wants. That's his desire for your heart, for your life. Intimacy with him. And guess what? He loved you and me so much that he came down to earth on a mission from his dad to reconcile us to the Father by his death on the cross. This morning, no matter what mistakes you've made in the past, how badly you've messed up, I want to let you know that Jesus loves you, that his blood covers a multitude of sins. And I want to give you the opportunity this morning to choose him to be your Lord and your Savior. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to invite you, if, if that's you, if you feel that, man, I, want, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I want to make him my Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity. If you can just pop your hand up. Yeah, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I don't see any hands. That's okay. That's okay. That's good. That means we're all on, our, on the same path, which is great. So the next, next thing I want to ask is, maybe you're going through some tests right now. You're going through some trials, some tribulations, and you feel, man, I've heard you say that he is Emmanuel, God with us. But that's not my experience. I want to tell you that you don't need to live life limited by your experience. That Holy Spirit wants to reveal the Father to you. He wants to reveal Jesus to you. So I want to invite you to stand. If, if you feel you, you're going through this test and you want to know God, you want to know God as Emmanuel, God with us, I want to invite you to stand and we're going to pray together very quickly. So I'm not going to embarrass you in any way. I'm not going to call you up to the front. But just where you are. Okay, maybe. Yeah, that's awesome. Praise God. That's awesome. Yeah. Guys standing up all across the auditorium. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So let's pray. As, as our heads are bowed, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this morning, Lord. Thank you that you love us so much, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that the price you paid wasn't just to leave us alone, Lord, but you want to comfort us, you want to be with us through our struggles and our trials. Lord, I pray for my brothers standing right now. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would touch them. Lord, that you would reveal Jesus to them in a new and powerful way. That they would know that they're, they're experiencing your love and your grace on their lives as they're, they're going through these tests. Lord, I ask you would be with them. Lord, that they would know your love on a new level. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.